up, everybody? I am joshrussell.com. I am going to walk you through a setup that I saw. Uh, John Grass, photographer out of Chicago, created this four light setup. I think actually his is a five light setup. I'm going to run with four lights and see if I can recreate it with the Westcott setup. I want to show you. Uh, I have Chad coming in a little later. He is the assistant chief of the Kakana Fire Department. He's going to bring like a full bunker uh, turnout gear, uh, as well as his dress uniform too. So we're going to have some fun with it. Uh, I got the smoke machine warming up, the the haze. But we're going to set everything up, and I'm going to walk you through the setup before he gets here. And then once he gets here, I'll kind of just run behind the scenes style. But I want to walk you through the setup that I'm going to use for this. Now, I'm not trying to uh, exactly copy John's style. I just kind of want to start some videos like this where I'm trying to recreate setups that I've seen online. Uh, not to copy them, but to just kind of show you in case you're looking to create that style and you want to try to implement into your workflow. So the first thing I need to do is I need to set up my X-Drop Pro. Now, all of this, all of the products that I'm using are Westcott, except for these guys, which these one by fours are not Westcott. They are uh, the other brand, uh, but I just don't have some one by fours yet. So, but everything else is Westcott except for the one by fours. Just wanted to let you know that right now. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the X drop up. And I am going to run this in eight foot by eight foot orientation. I'm going to put it all the way down. Basically, the best way to do this is to put it all the way up. And then if you need it tighter to the wall, then you do it after that. And I'll show you how once it's up and set up and everything. But this thing is awesome because it you can have an 8 foot by 8 foot backdrop set up. You can actually have an 8 foot by 16 foot backdrop set up in a matter of minutes. No need for a wall hanger like this. You just do it all right here. Shortman goes in the middle. Tall one, and tall one. Uh, so that's kind of how it goes to start. I mean, you're already on the way. Uh, all right, so we got that set up. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually, I should have grabbed it, but I'm going to grab my backdrop. Now, this is a background town backdrop. It's the one that you saw me use outside in the woods. This is called the Boon, and it's from background town. I will put the link in the description so you know where I got it. This is the eight foot by eight foot made for the X drop pro. And I'm going to run all the way around all four sides until I find the center. Cause that's what I always do. This thing is remarkably easy to put up. Three holes. Whoa. Come to the back. First one up. Go to the center here. I usually raise the center one one position up and then I'll come around to the other side and finish this side because if you put all three up full sometimes the middle one will fall off so you got to kind of watch what you're doing here and then we'll kind of go the rest of the way with it until we got a tight tight backdrop drop that down and then it's kind of just going back and forth making sure everything is set up corner tighten this corner now we just got to get this tight which is kind of just some uh working with it until you see that all the kinks are worked out one more corner here tighten that up and we got ourselves a tight backdrop here eight foot by eight foot it's the boon once again now it's way too far off my wall. So with the extra pro, so you can actually just loosen this, bring it up. Now what it's going to do is it's going to kick it closer or forward. So just take this and lower it until you're back to even. You want to go higher up. That way you can get nice and close to the wall. Not worry about it falling or anything. So now I Got about an extra, probably three feet from it. And now we are, what you would say, cooking with kerosene. Which kerosene probably isn't the best thing to ever cook with, but you know. Okay, so basically what we're going to do now is we're going to run these one by fives. Uh, I call them one by fours in the beginning, but they're actually one by fives. Uh, they're going to be kicker lights. They're going to be rim lights on each side. So there's going to be one facing this way here. 
and there's going to be one facing this way here. Now, the 1x4 Westcott wrapping box is going to go up high, and it's going to face down on the back of what will be his turnout gear, his helmet. Uh, so then that's basically the three three point setup in the back, and then we will introduce a front light as well. So I'm going to get this wrapping box switch set up in the back. That way you can see where it's going. So what I'm basically just going to do is I'm going to figure out how to get it in there, first of all. Bring this forward. The good thing about the X-Drop Pro is it's ultra light, really easy to move. The downside to that is it's ultra light, really easy to fall. Not really easy, but just make sure you're sandbagging it if you're outside, like in my previous video. So we're going to take this, we're going to take it up. But I'm going to turn it a little bit more because I already know that it's going to be too far out. So we'll go up with this. And up again. And now what we'll do is we'll take this X drop. And when I do this, I'm going to have to try to get it under it. So this might be a little working with it. But like I said, this thing is light. So you can just move it around. And with the X drop or the background down background drop, super easy to move around because those things are. Now this is the ultra cloth one. So. If you're looking for it and you're trying to figure out which one this is, this is the Ultra Cloth. Come on. Just go a little bit lower. A little bit. I'm hitting the wall here, so. I don't want to use an R a boom arm if I don't have to, but I might have to. Because this is just being just a little tricky here. Gonna have to use a boom arm, which is fine. Okay, so I got that set up. Now it's on a boom arm. Uh, I am noticing it is just a little too vertical. So let's bring this down. Basically what I did is I just switched it over to an extended boom arm. That way I could get a little bit more out, which that's gonna work a lot better like that. Now we'll go ahead. I did sandbag this pole, by the way, the C-stand. And then we'll bring this in like we tried to before. Put this where it needs to be. And then extend it. And then from there, I just need to center this a little bit, which it's close. I got a little bit of tight looseness here in this pole, so let's go ahead and fix that. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we got the 1x4 set up where it needs to be up top. Uh, our, chat, our subject is going to be right about here. So basically what that light is going to do is it's just going to kind of hit the top of his head and light up the top of the helmet just a little bit. Now, so what we can do from there is we can take our 1x4s, put those here. And the cool thing about this is, is once you get the backdrop and the Hair light, the, the actual hair light set up, doesn't take anything to get this set up. Now, I would like to ideally have grids on these, but I can't find one of my grids. So we're going to hope that it just works without the grids. Boom. And you just want to make sure they're at the right angle here. So now, as you see, if I have Chad here, this light is going to hit him up here. These lights are going to hit him here and here. So let's turn him just a little. Plus, I don't want the logo seen because because the wonderful Wizard of Oz. So just kind of look and see where you're at. See where all three lights are. 
I would like to get this a little more center, but because of where the pole is in the back, it's not quite centering, but it's okay. It's enough to, to hit him. So now all we have to do is set up the front end, and that is going to be fairly simple. So we'll go ahead and we'll take this one. And so I should have said and, and told you guys up top, I have an FJ200 with the rapid box switch 1x4. Each one of these lights are FJ400s. And then my main light up front is going to be an FJ200. Because I'm in the studio, I don't need a ton of power. And I only have two FJ400s. Okay, guys. So I got the uh, quick plate on here for the S mount bracket. Mainly because I don't have another rapid box switch adapter. So we're going to go ahead and just place this on there. Now, as you can see, that is not the right adapter, but that's okay because we're going to leave it forward like this anyway. It's not really going to have a chance to flop back like that. And I'm going to use the Manny Ortiz Beauty Dish that is with a grid on here. Uh, the reason I'm using this one is because I do have a Bowens mount. I don't have one of the micro Bowens mounts. So I gave it to one of the Photog Nation members. And now I wish I had one. So now we have all of our lights set up now. The one th more thing that I'm going to add that John does, or that John does not do in his video, is he actually has another one of the 1x4s down here as a as a as um, like a fill to fill in the chin and stuff like that. I'm actually going to use the Westcott Eyelighter 3. Now it is basically going to do the same thing as long as you have the angle right. The only, down or the only upside to this, the downside to what John does, is this is shaped to actually, when the light hits it, it will create a reflection of a crescent in the bottom of the eyes. Now, I noticed on John's photos that it was just a straight line across. This is actually going to fill in the pupil and iris and, and that area. So this should actually work a little bit better. Uh, now, uh, the guy that I'm creating this after is like one of the best sports and portrait photographers I've ever seen. But... We have Westcott on our side. Westcott Eyelighter 3. So let's run through it all again. We're going to have the our main light right here. That's the Westcott FJ200 with a Manny Ortiz Beauty Dish and the Westcott Grid. Down below it as a fill, we're going to have the Eyelighter 3. And once again, I'll have links to all of this stuff. Uh, Eyelighter 3 here on the back wall here. We have a Westcott FJ400, a, another Westcott FJ400 on the other side, which have generic 1x5 uh, strip boxes on them. And then back as a hair fill light, we have a Westcott FJ200 with the rapid box switch 1x4. Uh, none of the lights are gridded in the back. I wish they were. I just don't have enough grids for that. Backdrop is the Westcott X-Drop Pro, 8 foot by 8 foot, with a background town Boone 8 by 8 ultra cloth made for the Westcott X-Drop Pro. So that is the entire setup. Uh, we're all good. We're all set up, ready to go. Hayes machine is ready to go, so let's just kind of get that up here. That's going to be right about here. I will probably end up putting something under it to give it some height. How about a little dodgeball? Because I just want to be able to lift it just a little. Get the fog rolling in here. Give that a second to just start pumping out some fog. There is solution in it. It's just going to take a second. But everything is all set up. Now all I have to do is get my camera ready and my monitor and make sure the trigger works. And then I'll basically take some test fires. I'll probably have Justin stand over here uh, and take some test fires and see how they look. So let's get that going. Okay, so I was running into an issue with the photos. I'll actually put one up right now so you can see what I ran into. But it was creating like a square in the back because I didn't have anything gridded. 
So I went ahead, I put a grid on this one, uh, and I was going to put a grid on the other one, but I can't find it. So what I'm actually going to do is a video trick. I mean, I'm just going to try to flag it and see if I can get that to work. So basically, this light is spilling too much light over here, and it's creating a, a square in the background. So what I want to do is I want to flag it down by basically just putting something in the way. And we we'll use the black side, and we're just going to take this. And that's like pretty much all we're going to do is we're just going to flag it so... So it'll still hit Shad, our subject, but it will not hit the backdrop anymore. Just back here. Ideally, I'd like to have a little bit taller of one, but that should do its job. And I'm just going to test fire with Justin back there holding the camera and see if that works. So now instead of it hitting the backdrop, it's hitting this flag. So I can actually take this and move it back. And it should help even better. Basically this just, this reflector, a lot of people don't realize that that's why there are multiple colors to these five in ones. The black is basically just going to kill that background or kill the flash, I should say, from hitting the background. And we got another one. Now I got to watch out a little bit because it's actually creating a little bit of a shadow back there. So I have to pay attention to that. So my other option would be to grid it. Uh, like I said, I don't have grids. So I'm going to have to probably just make a grid out of a couple octagon grids. Let's just go ahead and move this. Try one more thing here. So because of where I moved that to, it's creating too much light back there. So we're just going to make a grid out of a couple extra grids. So I do have a couple Octobox grids here. It's not going to be ideal, but it'll do the job. Because basically what we're just trying to do is when you don't have anything on your, on your soft boxes, when you're not using a grid, this light is actually going to hit this corner, the silver side. And bounce this way, bounce this way. When you create, when you put a grid on there, it's when that light bounces, it's just going to hit those black squares. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with these to make our own rectangular grid here. Let's just see. We're going to go something like that and then just kind of take this down. Now the, the downside is, is these squares are not going to be like perfect. So we got to kind of watch what we're doing. Bring this back. And we'll just kind of tuck it back here somewhere. I'm going to see if we can get that tight enough to do what we need it to do. Not too shabby. That might do what we need it to do. And then we'll just take another one. And then this one. Because this one's like lower, it's honestly not even really doing much to the shot. I'm just going to kind of tuck it up in here. Velcro it there. Velcro it up in here. Velcro it to each other if we can get it to kind of clamp. And then just kind of put it down here. Because like I said, the top half is what we're worried about. So let's try one more time. It's not the prettiest, but it should work. I can move that light in now because it is doing what I wanted it to do. And one more time, Justin, let's see. Moved it too close. One second. And...
and boom goes the dynamite. Still got it a little close. But the cool thing is, is so you can see everything that's going on right there. I can actually scoot it out just a little bit. Let's get you back in that spot, Justin. Move this out and over. And from there, bring that tripod in just to, uh, your gimbal in just a little. So from there, now we're getting a nice soft look. Uh, the cool thing is, is like, yes, I can see everything that's going on around the photo, but the actual final photo will be something like that. I'll extend the background a little bit. I will make sure everything's in focus when I'm shooting the final photo. Uh, but that's kind of the setup. So not ideal with this uh, makeshift octo box grid or uh, soft strip box grid, but it's doing its job. It's softening this square that was back here. Would love to have another one up there. And then this one is uh, pristine over here. And then basically eyeliner, uh, beauty dish, ready to go. We'll just wait for Chad to get here. We're gonna run some behind the scenes of this. Now with these, even with what's going on, like with the smoke and everything, I'll be able to cut him out and put any backdrop behind him that I want to. So if I don't want to run with like just this distorted background or distressed background, I could pop him out, put him in front of a building on fire or anything like that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is my uh, wannabe John Grass lighting setup. Four lights, a reflector. I ran into some problems. I will kind of show them. But overall, this was a lot of fun. Thanks, Chad, for coming out. So there is going to be another video showing you all about how I'm going to edit these photos because some of that haze kind of filled in a little bit where I didn't want it to. Uh, and the lighting was a little tricky. I'm not going to lie. So if you want to see how I edit these photos, go ahead and click right here. You can watch that video. I'll talk to you later. Peace.